There are a surprising number of historical anomalies, which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages, a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not, with the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community. A controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement. Rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present, all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974 when a Glenn Daniel, professor of archaeology at Cambridge University, took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affair's artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important, and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel affair highly compelling. Lake Titicaca. This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere, a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christophe, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, Claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, 
His extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It's stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa recorded in his Historica de los Incas a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca named Manco Capac who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? We have in the past covered countless ancient anomalies found amongst the many ruins of ancient Peru. Hillside fortresses, mountaintop sanctuaries, completely self-sustaining, technologically advanced group whose ruins still contain countless as yet unexplained methods of construction and often incorporating inexplicably large megalithic blocks once quarried, carved, transported, and then somehow, seemingly effortlessly, placed atop one another. Masters of architecture, irrigation, stonework, and horticulture, this group, although claimed to have been that of our far less capable recent ancestors, the Incas, built self-sustaining, earthquake-proof settlements high among the clouds. Sites often built at altitudes far higher than 2,000 meters above sea level, with these ancient, once indigenous builders, also one installing simple yet incredibly effective gaps in the pathways to such sites as Machu Picchu, allowing the inhabitants to draw the bridges to the site, cutting it off from any possible invaders. Once these bridges were removed, sites such as Machu Picchu became virtually impenetrable. We have previously covered many incredible Peruvian ruins. The Intihuatan, for example, is yet another relic we recently covered here on the channel. It is yet another example of this now lost civilization's past knowledge and extraordinary now lost capabilities. A solar clock, precisely bored into being, directly out of the bedrock of Earth, which precisely indicates the solstices. We discussed how certain characteristics of many ancient sites, most notably the apparent Mayans masonry, Incan, and Neolithic sites, such as the Stonehenge within the UK, all display a past obsession with solar precisions. Furthermore, the constructors of these sites all displayed an uncanny urge in particular and undoubtedly most prominently at the site of Machu Picchu to undergo a mammoth undertaking, to create what now appears to have merely been a quirk of engineering, entwined within the architectural planning of Machu Picchu itself. It is often perceived as overkill, so much polygonal masonry is present virtually everywhere it could be laid. Perhaps these efforts of stoning up literally every crevasse at the site, regardless of whether it would be on public display or not, may have merely been due to a purely aesthetic obsession by a once highly capable, now lost civilization. One who must have perceived such, as yet unexplained tasks, as child's play. The incorporation of natural geological features into the sites is yet another curious characteristic of Machu Picchu, 
which many individuals who visit the location are perplexed by. It would appear that the ancient civilization responsible for this incredible site's existence, like a number of the other sites we have covered previously, incorporated the living rock of the mountains into the construction plans of their past sanctuaries. Rather than have simply carved them flat, many ruins display a collaboration of such natural stones into the buildings themselves. The Temple of the Condor is one of these incredible examples. A natural rock formation, which was formed millions of years ago, was spared destruction and was incorporated into the building of the site, subsequently becoming a place of worship. Many believe the temple was a pilgrimage of religious worship. The masons who manipulated the Temple of the Condor into the site skillfully shaped the rocks below the main menhir into the shape of outspread wings of a bird largely believed to be that of a depiction of a condor in flight. According to a number of studies of the ruin, upon the floor of the temple is the carving of the condor's head and neck feathers flowing up into the body, which is the natural formation we still see today. This completes the posited figure of the three-dimensional bird. The Temple of the Condor is undoubtedly one of the most spectacular examples of what these so-called pre-Incas were once capable of. Like so many other ancient sites found all over the world, share so many characteristics with ancient Peru, the question is why did the builders of all these sites go to such great efforts not to displace or even incorporate seemingly common rocks into the build of the sanctuaries? Who were the builders of Machu Picchu? Were they a world-faring civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.